you're not going to believe how easy it is to create this colorful background. Hi, I'm Creative Katie. Welcome to my channel. And here's my secret. I am going to use this Aquarelle Rainbow Napkin from Ninny's Napkins to not only jumpstart my creative process, but to basically give me all the color that I have in the background. This I am using as an Insta background. Of course, with napkins, you need to remove the two excess plies. I just wet my fingers and I tap up and down in the corner and pull those off. You can save these and use them in your art. And then I am just going to position this napkin. I'm going to cut off the excess here just so it's easier to put on. And oh, I'll save that bottom piece. It's going to show up on a card or an iCAD or ETCs, some other project, because I absolutely love the colors that are here. So I'm working on my 9 by 12 Kansas Mixed Media art journal. I take it off the coils so I can work flat, and I am gluing it half it by half with fluid matte medium. Now, when you put a napkin on an art journal page, you are going to get some wonderful texture. As well as whatever patterns and colors that you're getting, you're also going to get texture. So my background is very easily color filled with texture. Now I'm using a piece of saran wrap to rub on the top to make good adhesion. That just allows my hand to move freely over it without catching the napkin. Now I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing at this point. So I am giving this a coat of clear gesso. I know it looks like it's going on and it's white, but it dries perfectly clear. I know I might be adding color or doing um, some other techniques and the gesso is just going to prevent it from. Now I'm using my heat tool, but I noticed this heat tool says it can be used for embossing. The original one I bought about seven years ago didn't work for embossing. What's your experience? So once that's completely dry, I am just cutting off the excess and even this little bit, I am going to save it. Wouldn't that look nice? Just cut it in strips and use that on an art journal page. Oh, I've got so many ideas for that Aquarelle rainbow stencil. Now I used one of the stamp sets from Vicky P. Then I got this from Ninny's Napkins and the letter stamp I brayered on black acrylic paint. This grid stamp I'm also brayering on some paint and putting it on. And basically all I'm going to add to my background is contrast with some stamps. Here is a homemade stamp that has some circles on it and that just reminded me of the circles that was on the napkin and I'm adding white on here and I think this works perfectly. I'm brayering on the white acrylic paint and then stamping. I'll put a sheet here because I want to stamp off the page. The DIY stamp that I'm using is made using a container from gum. I'll put a link to that video. You can check it out if you're interested. So quite honestly, in a matter of minutes, I have this gorgeous background. I found a swirl stamp and I'm putting white acrylic paint on it and I'm just making the swirl go twice just again to add more interest to the background. But I'm not having to take out eight colors 
of paint to make this background. All I've taken out for paint is my black and my white. And I chose to use my napkin, this napkin for this today because I don't have a lot of time to create. And I was undecided what color scheme to go with, so I made it easy on myself. But it kind of feels like I cheated. But it's a good cheat. Yummy. Do you love it? Let me know in the comment section. What would you put on this background? So I am going to do a version of negative painting and I'm going to make these hearts pop out from the background. Now I keep different size heart templates in my stash because I tend to use them often enough. So I had these in an envelope stored in my filing cabinet and I'm just tracing them with my Stabilo All Pencil. I like having all of them, even though I only need one to trace with, but I like laying it out and seeing it on there. Now, the phrase there, listen to your heart, is a sentiment that I cut right out of a napkin that I just happened to find. And I noticed that the green of that matched the green of the frog, and then it matched perfectly the green that's in this Aquel rainbow napkin. And that's all it takes to mix and match and put things together. So here I'm taking black acrylic paint on my angle brush and activating the Stabilo All Pencil as well. And this, by shading around these, is making that image pop out from nothing. Now, when you do negative painting, you are painting out the background, the negative space, and making those things pop. So I'm not really painting out the negative space, but it's definitely a cousin of that technique. So this is a great technique to use when you have a very colorful, very busy napkin. And as I said, one, one of my favorites. You can do any size and shape. If you're not a fan of hearts, don't do hearts. You could do squares, rectangles, triangles, random shapes, clouds, I chose hearts because I wanted to use that sentiment, magazine sentiment that I found. And then I'm just edging the page as well and using the same technique. Now I'm taking white and I'm going on the outside of the hearts. Would you have left it just black? I was undecided. Each has its own look. And if you're following this tutorial, again, if you liked it better with black, then don't put the white. Tweak it to your love and like. After giving that a dry, I'm time to, time to put the focal image on. And I want to put these, this frog, and this is from, again, a napkin from Ninny's Napkins called Prince Ferdinand. I'm peeling off the excess plies, and I'm going to glue this onto copy paper, because if I glued it onto that colorful background, that would come through. And I don't want the frog to have those colors. I want to keep those colors on. So here's that napkin, and there are four different frog images and I definitely will be using them um, for other projects 
And you can see how the greens just all perfectly matched as if they were created. Now, you don't like frogs, you could put this tulip napkin, also from Ninny's napkin, that could be put on there. Probably wouldn't do hearts with it. Ooh, you could put this bunny rabbit. Cut it out. That would look really cute. This I cut out from a birthday card that I got. Another napkin. So you have lots of options and use what makes you happy. If I was doing the bunny rabbit, I might do the shading with egg shapes instead of hearts. So here I'm just taking the fluid matte medium and gluing one frog down. I do decide to put two frogs on this page. This is kind of a love heart page. And then once that's completely dry, I'm going to fussy cut it out, but you don't need to watch me. So there are the two frogs and my sentiment. I decided to cut it apart so it fits my composition. And I'm gluing this down with uh, gel medium. It's still the matte finish, but because it's copy paper and napkin, there's more layers, I find the gel medium works better than the fluid, but the fluid would work. Talking about the sentiment from the magazines, I have, and I just re-found re them when I organized my studio, a whole packet of sentiments that I cut out of magazines at some point in time, early in my art journaling career. So today I'm starting to use that. So I decided to add the hearts and I'm using the turquoise that is somewhat in the back and the purple. And I am applying paint through this heart stencil onto the excess napkin. And then I'm going to dry it, cut it out, and I can then glue it onto the frogs. And the reason I'm gluing it on or cutting it, doing it on the napkin instead of just stenciling it straight onto the frog is because I am altering the size somewhat. I did not have a heart the exact size that fits on the frog. So so there I've fussy cut them out and I'm just gonna glue those hearts, the big one and then a little one inside. Of each frog. Don't like the hearts? Leave them off. Here I decided to take the turquoise and add a couple of those hearts here just to make everything work together. And I'm giving it a dry. Now I grabbed my General's Charcoal. This one is medium and I chose the medium as opposed to the soft because I want a little bit of smudgeability but I don't want it to be completely smudged. I want more of that sketchy line. This is just to bring out the frogs a little bit more from the background. And because I know I'm not adding any water anymore any wet medium i'm not going to reactivate this and my art journal pages i don't varnish them if i was doing this on a canvas i would have to if i use the charcoal i'd have to spray it with a fixative before i varnished I 
I am so in love with that background and I have so many ideas. I'm glad I have a piece of it left over from this napkin and another whole napkin. And I might just have to get some more. It really makes the process so easy. Here I'm just shading a little bit, making it a little darker underneath them so it grounds them. It's like they're sitting on a lily pad. And then I'm going to splatter with some thinned out gold acrylic paint. What do you think? I'm very happy with how it all came together. And it all started with a napkin. Now, I'm thinking about this napkin and while I have more uses for it, I'm thinking I could try to duplicate this on an art journal page with my painting. Stay tuned, maybe I'll do that. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Until next time, go get creative.